understand at this point in my life, there is never a moment in time where I'm not carrying someone's disappointment. Right. Like us doing this. I had to disappoint somebody in order to do this. Right. Every time I drop my kids off to daycare, I am disappointing them. Like my family relationships, my friendships, email after email from you know who, when can we expect? Like my husband, like I am always disappointing someone because yeah. of the finiteness of time. So like Well, that, I can't think of the last time you disappointed. I think that it took, we had a time where there was, because I used to be an all-star. I would always be over-delivering, delivering before, mm. over-communicating, like, but I could work until, I always use this anecdote, before Jared and I's wedding, because my book was due and a bunch of things were happening at that time, my eyes shut down. Yeah. And I went to the optometrist and they're like, you just have been looking at a screen too long. And yeah. so like, they, I couldn't put my contacts in, which kind of sucked because for my wedding, I was like, I'm not wearing glasses. So I was just blind. Um, so I was just like, I do marry I, I didn't know that. So yeah. I mean, I guess we all keep <laughs> things to ourselves too, which yeah. is okay. Right, and so I just say that to say that like, yeah. I think at a time I could not disappoint people because mm. I could sacrifice myself in a way that I just can't do as a mom anymore. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, back to the video. I see you like a childhood friend that I have grown up with and continued to grow with in my adult years. Like, wow, it's really cool to be here with someone that has been along for the ride. Yeah, I, I like that because I think that the, like thinking about that and you know how many people come into and out of our lives, like knowing that you are one of those like rarer constants for me, I take as like really good validation because I see how you're perceived in the world. And I think, you know, we're all a combination of the company that we keep. And so I think, you know, it puts me in pretty great company to, to consider you someone who's close to me. So I think for me, like that's, that's like one of the great things and like being reflective on it. Actually, before I ask the next question, can you just frame for people who don't even know what a manager is? I think at it, like its very core, a manager is someone who's a strategic partner uh, to an individual who has a public facing business in the entertainment space. Um, I touch all different pieces of their public facing business. And that means from a strategic administrative organizational standpoint, I help, you know, both like get the wheels in motion and keep the business train on the tracks and moving forward, whether it's, you know, making sure that our different commitments are being upheld through with different partners that we have, um, whether it's brands, businesses, um, you know, TV shows, the like, or just making sure that, you know, we're getting things done on a day-to-day -day basis um, as a business and making sure that we're moving the agenda forward. Is it fair to say that you only represent experts? And I feel like the best definition of it is digital first talent management for category leaders fueled by strategic business development and organizational systems that create leverage and scale for our clients. Why is that up on your screen? Like, did you know I was going to ask? No, this I didn't. But I was in the I was in the process of writing an email, and I was and I had that there, and I was like, you know, why just pull this out of the air when I can actually tell you exactly how I'm defining it today? Have I ever said genuinely thank you to you? Do you ever feel like I say thank you to you? I do. I think that I like. I, I don't even know if you are saying thank you right now, so I won't say I appreciate you saying it. No, I'm joking. I, I think like in my most cynical, I, I do think that like management can be a thankless job and I don't go it and I like would not suggest going into this if you want a job where you're getting constantly pat on the back. Um, I do think sometimes it's like no news is good news. Um, so, you know, if I have a client on tour right now and she had two back-to-back -back events yesterday and I didn't hear from her. To me, that just means that everything went well and there were no problems. I feel like at a time, I think before I had kids, I was better at like celebrating your birthday, celebrating your moments, just to like hmm. acknowledge that with that work that we've done together, with the way that you've empowered me, inspired me, using your unique gifts mixed with my unique gifts has just been such a 
incredible combination I'm so grateful for. I mean, the, Thank this, you. you know, this is in such large part yeah. to what we've done together. No, I, I like, I do, I so appreciate you saying that. And I think what I look at my success, I look at my client's success. I think some of the work that I've had to do personally is um, like taking a step back and realizing like the more success that my clients have, the more success I have. But at the same time, like I need to also put that focus in building my business because the more that I build my business um, and scale my business, it's just going to continue helping my clients in that way as well. So I think that, you know, hopefully my clients start looking at the success that my company has as a whole as well as like a reflection of the success that they have. I think that we've got a lot of, I want to say freaky overlaps, but not even that. I think the reason why we've stayed together and we are a very good pair is, and this is for any kind of relationship, like we just genuinely want the same things and are willing to put in similar levels of work so that we mm-hmm. reach similar milestones almost at the same time. Yeah. Like even you're meeting our new employee today, Arya, who we just hired and you hired the exact same employee for your business yeah. a few months ago. So we happen to be similar ages. We were similar ages. Not that there's a time frame for anything. Yeah. But it's, it, it is, it is definitely, it, there's definitely been, like I said before, like parallel paths. It doesn't mean that things have to go in lockstep, but I think it's also a good, like, you know, gut check for each other because we can kind of see like, you know, are we both progressing? And I think that I, even if we're not, you know, we're not locking ourselves in a room, um, you know, critiquing each other's businesses in like a direct way. I, I think that there's like an unspoken. Although I've critiqued mo- your business and you've critiqued I, Of course. But, but I think that like from an intentional standpoint on a day-to-day basis, there's no competition and there isn't necessarily a like comparison as much as I think our like both of our ambition fuels the others. Yeah. If I get to a place where I feel like the best me is not possible with you and vice versa and Mm. we've troubleshooted, you know, as much as the relationship has warranted. I mean, the same thing with for you and I, I feel like there's a certain level of respect that we've gotten to. There's a certain level of just like mutual understanding so that it's not like, oh, if for a month I feel like we're not on the same page, I would consider yeah. leaving you. But if we got to a place of over like extended period of time, we're like, yeah, like you can't take me where I want to go or I'm holding you back from where you want to go. Yeah. Because we've actually never talked about breaking up before. Actually, like, I, you know, I don't think it's fair. Like, they're, they're, I, I don't, A, I don't like putting energy out into the world of like about things that I don't want to like come to fruition. Really? I don't, I really don't. Like, I, I can... You can't see a world without me, so I don't even want to. I don't about want. It. No, I don't want to see a world without you. I don't. It's not that I can't imagine. I have a. I have a very, very creative imagination. I. I could come up with the most plausible and implausible versions of like how that could play out. But I think. I, know you, in a very intimate way of like, and I and I hope you feel like I see who you are as a person, and I think you see who I am as a person, and I think that is actually rare in our world and I, I wish that it was less rare but I think like when because there's so much there's there's intimacy involved in our business relationship um, and I think that the you know one of the reasons I'm able to be a, an advocate for you in the way that I am is because I, I I know that I can you know I know the direction that you want to bring your business and what you want out of your life you know no no time has that I can really think of have like you know I parted ways with a client um, that was surprising to one or the other. Um, But I think like the commonality between all those relationships, you know, when those relationships end has been for me like a lack of partnership. Have I been like a pain point in your professional life at a point in time? Um, If... I'm sure that there have been times where I have been frustrated with different parts of our business relationship, but none of them have been personal. I do think that we've had conversations about um, like time prioritization. And I think for you, like probably the biggest challenge for you was like finding a childcare solution that worked. And I think that was a point of like conversation between us that like, made it more difficult sometimes for me to like get push the agenda forward for you because there's only so much time in the day yeah and you were again reasonably distracted i think for me 
um, understanding that even better now, being a father, but you had two children before I had one. Oh, I couldn't wait till you had kids. Of course, I and, and I think, wait. and I always knew that also. And yeah. I, it, not in that you couldn't wait, but in that I, I can't understand what you're going you. through. Exactly. I can't understand what you're going through, but I can understand that I don't understand it. And that's, I think, just another example of like, you know, what that can look like. Okay, the two times I thought about breaking up with you. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. popping in to show love to Squarespace, a partnership that literally keeps my YouTube channel alive, so thank you. But now let's talk about you. How can Squarespace help you to present and organize your ideas in a way that brings more meaningful business your way? Two words, Fluid Engine. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website starting point and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology. Squarespace Blueprint AI and SEO tools. Start a completely personalized site with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Then easily launch your site and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools. So you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Flexible payments. Make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools and in eligible countries, offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash booty to get 10% off the purchase of your first website or domain. Twice in my career, I've had viral moments. Mm. And I don't know if you even remember what those are. Culturally, we're very different. Mm -hmm. And I have no experience with white Jewish men. And I you know, grew up and I went to a Catholic school and I just didn't even know. So I have to learn a lot about you and yeah. I have to be curious about you. And, and same. Exactly. And, and I like love, I think like if we surround ourselves with only people who look like us, talk like us, dress like us, think like us, like we're just, you know, making our world an echo chamber. Yeah. And so like, I think we get to like learn from each other and I'm like so proud of the, all the different people that I work with because of that as well. Yeah. And I can always be real with you when, about like things like when I have yeah. moments that are like caucasity moments, <laughs> I can be like, Adam, you won't believe the caucasity and you'll either help with it or just be like, okay, now I know that that's a part yeah. of like the lived experience of yeah. like a woman of color. So, um, that to be said, you know, as a black woman, as an Indian woman, uh, and the culture that I'm a part of, yeah. you're not a part of that culture. So my big viral moments, were that moment on the reel that happened, mm -hmm. and then my lovers and friends episode with Jazzy. Yeah. But the way that they were big cultural moments are not on your radar. Right. So I was like, I don't think Adam gets it and knows how to take advantage or capitalize off of these moments because mm. he doesn't. They're not on his radar. Yeah. So you're not seeing it. So you're like, oh, that's not really a thing. And I'm telling you that like these are like what people work for. They work for these types of yeah. visibility. So I think I interpreted it at the time, like you're dismissive of them because mm. you don't see these outlets or these things as being things. Yeah. Now I realize that like, that's not the kind of manager that you are. Yeah. You're not like, like I remember we got that meeting with, um, with someone and you're like, we're only getting this meeting because of your viral thing. And I was like, exactly Adam, we should be getting more of these. And you're like, these are stupid. You know, these are not, these are not real lasting things. And this type of interest is going to fade when the next big thing comes. Mm. So we're not building our career off of trying to make these moments stretch Yeah. because we've got something greater in mind. That's yeah. my interpretation, but yeah, no, I think that, I mean, I, I think those were both good learning experiences for me as well. And it's like, what, what not even, you know, like remove you from the equation. Like I think. I mean, I say this to a new employee, like, I don't care if you make mistakes, like don't make the same mistake over and over and over and over again, because that means you didn't learn anything. There are certain things like I need to be able to admit I am not capable of, or I'm not the best person who's situated. And so actually like sometimes when we talk about like, how do we capitalize on a viral moment? Like sometimes my mind is like, well, I'm not a publicist. So I'm not, maybe that's not really where, like what my best skill set is. Um, but at the same time, like being a manager means wearing a lot of different hats. It doesn't mean I don't have relationships in the PR space or whatever that is, but maybe I'm not, you know, maybe if like we have a, I have a client who is having a lot of these types of moments, like maybe it is about like building the team out further and in that it takes a village. Um, yeah. And behind this door, I actually have a publicist I want to introduce you to. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that that leads me into my last point of what we are, you know, building 
because even then, you know, in those moments, there's like, there's this feeling that you're supposed to catch them all, but we didn't actually have a funnel or a basket to put these things into. Uh, we didn't yeah. have the infrastructure there on many different, and we didn't have the manpower, right? So when you do have these moments, you should have, you know, a phone call away of like, who can you bring in? We didn't have those things set up. So I think that's what, you know, we're both doing in both 2S Entertainment yeah. and both Shared Entertainment this year. Again, really serendipitously, I very beautifully, I, I feel like it's very cool to be, you know, parallel building together and learning together. But the other time I thought about dumping your ass is um, around the end of Lovers and Friends, the podcast. Uh-huh. Do you know why? Do I know why? Was I just being too forceful in wanting you to continue? I just feel like you didn't get it. Yeah. I felt like, again, like we got to a place in our relationship where I'm like, mm. he's accustomed to a certain business model. I'm trying to build a different one. Mm. And I don't think he wants to learn how to make the business that I want. But you know now that I did want Yes. It. Yes. Well, I didn't know at the time. I really, I actually think- No, we, I said now. I said We now. have this differentiation point because you feel like you were all on board. I feel like you didn't really get on board until top of this year. Right. So I feel like I spent a lot of months in succession last year, like trying to get you to understand mm. and you were trying to get me to understand your way. Mm. And I'm like, neither one of us are wrong. And that was the beautiful thing. I'm like, you yeah. are totally right. And your vision is completely accurate. And so is mine but they're just not the same vision. Yeah. So I don't know how this is gonna work. I'm, we're both thinking so many steps ahead that sometimes maybe one of our shortcomings is failing to see like what's immediately before us. And I think we've f struck like a really good balance of that, but I think we um, I think we were both kind of like fast forwarding the tape too much and like skipping the fact that like the work needed to get done. Yeah. To it. Um, but yeah. One of my favorite, relationship philosophers is Elaine de Botton. You should yes. rep him. Do you love him? No, but you have told you you reference him enough that I I know. Okay, well he's phenomenal and he says that people really over index on the beginning of relationships. Hmm. Like when you meet a couple, you're like, how did you meet? Like that's hmm. actually not gonna tell you much. To yeah. your point. Like when you yeah. first meet a client, maybe you get that like this is going to be big or maybe you don't. That's not really indicative of like how this yeah. trip's going to go. So with that being said though, I actually think that we have a very interesting how did you meet story. Do you want to share it? We met in 2016, which is eight years ago. And we were both single at the time and relatively new to Los Angeles. I had just started a job and gotten back into talent representation. Just giving rom-com. Giving rom-com, definitely. Except... <laughs> No, there was no romance. There was no romance. There was no romance. Um, part of my job was not only building my own client roster, but also um, reaching out to a wide swath of the YouTube creator community to onboard them to a platform that the company that I had was running and developing. And part of what that meant was being given a spreadsheet of a thousand plus names a week and needing to send out emails wasn't even reviewing the list for more than anything other than like spelling errors and making sure the emails were correct and the names were correct. When I talk about now, like who I want my clients to be, I use you as a, as, as the, the blueprint for it. But I think it's also funny because I, you know, there was no intention in how we first connected. Um, but my email that you received that was not personal at you can all. You come on in, babe. You can do your thing. But the email that you that you received that was not personal um, at least piqued your interest enough to want to set a meeting. And we met in Los Angeles, and I felt like we connected. I was excited about you. I thought you were incredibly dynamic and interesting in person, and I was excited about what you were building. I remember you telling me even just like your you know, personal story of moving to Los Angeles. And I think that in that, like hearing where you were at in your life and your career and what the direction you wanted, I think that there was a lot of, um, I don't know, game recognized game. Mm. I do. I, I really, I, I, I saw the, I saw the painting that you were, that you were, um, that you were working on. Do you know what's interesting? So then 2015, I thought we met before Jared and I, so Jared, do you remember no, we me? Did. No, because I started having sex with Jared in 2015. What? You, you, we started being fuck buddies at the end of that year in October. Yeah. 
So if we met probably yeah, early, of 2015. so I got to revoke that statement. You're not my longest dating LA relationship. Non-sexual. Non-sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was just worried because we quick fixed it. No, that's a beautiful, the reason why I think this story is interesting and you told it beautifully, thank you for that and thank you for that compliment. Um, the reason why I think this story is interesting is because we were both in the same place at the same time. Yeah. I would never in a million years open that email today. I get that email, I got like five of them today. I wouldn't send one of those emails right. today. I was just at a place in right. my life where I was like, I need a genuine partner. And when your email came in, I was just looking for partnership. And so I feel like I wasn't getting like an influx of those. I wasn't at that place. Mm. Issa Rae talks about this where people really underestimate the power of parallel networking. Mm. Like work with people who are where you're at. I'm on this ride with you now, but if you want to get off as soon as your script gets picked up by a studio who's, yeah. you know, it's being reviewed right now, I don't want to get on this ride with you. Like I yeah. want to be here with people who love what they do. I want to be in this with people who like, I always answer that question when someone asks me, what do you want to do in five years? What I'm doing now, but bigger and better. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean tied to a dollar amount. There's different ways that I quantify or qualify, as you know, with the work yeah. we're doing right now, I qualify better. But I asked you that question, and do you remember what you said? You know what? I want to hear it. For, I want to hear your, what, your memory of what I said. You gave me a name. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, you gave me a name of a person yeah. who I then went up, and I looked up that person, I looked at that yeah. person's career, I looked at that person's life, and I was like, he chose an amazing role model. Yeah. So this is the kind of person that I, I want to go on this journey with. Yeah. Not, of course, knowing that it would be what it is today. You know, yeah. These relationships are often very transactional yeah. and very short. What's really unique about yours, what I love about our relationship, not what is unique, what it makes it successful, probably in most relationships in this vein, is that you have the skills that I don't have mm. and you excel at the things that I don't want to do. And I believe that the things that I am uniquely good at, I don't want your help in. So I think that that's fair. Do you understand what I'm saying by that? I do. I mean, like I don't rely on you I, for what's lighting up for me is that I'm on camera right now with you. And that's like the last thing that I ever want to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, and I say that in like the sense of like, no, I'm, more than happy to do this with you. Yes. But I'm also, I'm not in this to sell a script. I, I don't need the spotlight on me ever. And I do like view my client's success as, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the best public version of my success. Um, I'm not looking at my success for the number of press hits or something like that. I'm looking at my success of like, are my clients happy? Are they moving their agenda forward? And, you know, are they being recognized in the ways that they want to be recognized? I think what's interesting about that, what I'm going to say next is because the skill that you have that I don't have is like, I am so trash at money and you are incredible. Like when I say thank you for the life that I have, I know that I would not have achieved this level specifically of financial success without you. And you know this because I'd sell my time for 50 bucks and a Big Mac. <laughs> like I just feel so awkward about it. And you're like, I'm going to push. And then, and you always do. So like you always to me, qualify or you know it's it's always it's never a it's a no-brainer to share my success with you both in that yeah. ceremonious way and also financially because you to me have such a big part of it so like in some ways what i'm going to say next is that yeah. you're kind of like the stereotypical manager guy right like you're about the money you're about the bottom dollar you're going to fight for your clients like you kind of look the part you talk the part you got the attitude not with me ever which i really appreciate but <laughs> i remember one of your employees being like adam is terrifying and i was like not i know i know what she meant like yeah, in certain yeah. meetings you're not afraid to go there and be that person yeah but the next thing i wanted to say is like what I love most about you, because you say you take on one client a year, and I probably send 10 people a week to you. You know what I mean? Okay. I often send people to you, or I ask you to talk to people or mentor people, and yeah. you are always so generous with your time. You're always so generous with your knowledge. Like, you just genuinely want everybody to win. Yeah. Um, and you'll, you'll always say to me, if I'm like, oh, this person, you know, really wants to meet with you, you're like, I'm not taking on clients, but I'll talk with them. I'll help them. Yeah. And I love that that's also a part of why you do this is because you genuinely want to see people win and succeed. I do. I do. I mean, I think it's important to be of service to others like in our lives and whatever that looks like can be different for different people. Um, I think, you know, like we said, like life is long, careers are long. 
So you never know where something's going to go. So it's like advice. Like I always give someone is like, you have a meeting or somebody wants to introduce you to someone like nine out of 10 times, like say yes. Like you don't know where that's going to go. It could lead to something like a former client of mine introduced me to my wife. Um, and my wife now she was living across the country at the time. It could have just, I could have written it off. And I said, you know, why not? Why, why not? Why say now? I'm going to be, I'm going to be in New York. They live there. She sounds interesting. Give it a shot. Right. And so I think, you know, obviously like there, there's always a careful balance of like how impulsive should we be? Um, I think like we don't necessarily have to say yes to everything. And time is also very, and our time most is very precious valuable. Resource, yeah. So I think that like, I say all of this with the caveat of like, use your best judgment. I think we'll close on your Venn diagram tattoo. Oh yeah. Because I feel like that, I think, and maybe you can help me out with this. Yeah. I feel like this is symbolic of our relationship as well, or yeah. a successful client manager relationship. I think that for me, what I've like grown with the tattoo and, and I'm happy that I left it open for interpretation. And because I think what it's become to mean for me is that, you know, we all have our own like learned experiences, but in order to be successful, like we have to find common ground. Um, and so I think that, you know, if we make it like a similar, like the truth is somewhere in the middle. Mm. Um, and I think we have to like, you know, not be so headstrong or willful to ignore the fact that other people have, you know, their own skill sets and belief systems to bring to the table and they are equally valuable. And so I think for me and like trying, and, and I think it also pushes me to like keep this front of mind because I'm guilty just like many people are of, you know, putting my own feelings or needs in front of others. And I think it's just, it's a good reminder of like trying to find that balance. In, in all those situations that we live in. It's interesting because the Venn diagram could be so many different, you know, variations of overlap. Yeah. And actually Aria uses the Venn diagram as a way to get people to assess like how close they are. But it's like in actuality, you might think that the closer you are, the more that you're one circle, that means that you're really tight. But yeah. in that, it's probably one of the more dangerous places to be, a la codependency. Yeah. So I think in your particular Venn diagram, um, cause yeah. it's like the overlap is like, 15%, 10%, yeah. which is like commission. So <laughs> I, <laughs> 10 for me. Though, 10%. Though we, we know there's some managers out there that are taking 50% oh, and, I know. and your, and your blood. I'm waiting for so. that email. I'm waiting mm -hmm. for that email from you. And I would have to really consider it because at the end of the day, <laughs> it's like, you're not wrong. Um, but I feel like that's a good representation of us because it's like, you have, like you said, you have a life, you have a family, you have friends, you have other clients. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a business that you're growing and managing and, doing it in such a meaningful, thoughtful way. I also like, to, again, we could just talk about the comparison between you and I all day. You started Two West how many years ago? Six years ago. And some people could be like, oh, why? you should have been so much further. I don't know if you get these comments a lot. I mm. often get the comments from people of like, you should be bigger. You should have more. You should have this. And I'm like, no, I actually think I have exactly what yeah. I deserve, what I've been envisioning, and I'll get there eventually. Like, I'm not in a rush for that, like, you started in your basement and now you're on the yeah. 17th floor. At... I think one of my favorite quotes is that comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. And so I think we can look at others as inspiration. You and I are going to see Esther Perel this evening together. Yes, we are. Which I can't wait for. What a special day for us. I know. Today really is our peak. It is. Yeah. It's, there you go. <laughs> it is. So I, and I think that, you know, like she, I, I think that we can look at different points in time or others as examples, motivators, North stars. But I think the more that you focus on bringing these different elements into your own life and business and like making, you know, the world that you want to see, um, your reality, the happier you're going to be. 102, I got to do my call before you get an email, which you probably already gotten. So we scheduled the call with Chan at one. We're all waiting. Thanks, Adam. You did great. Oh, love you. Love you too. <laughs> Sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs>